All right, welcome in to another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here. <clears throat> We're getting ready to jump into Psalm 40 today, so I don't I don't feel very confident we're going to make it through the entire chapter, so um, I think we'll probably get a little bit more than halfway. So I think this one's going to be a two-parter, but uh, it's a good one. So buckle up a little bit, put your seatbelt on, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make our way through this. So we're just going to go ahead and start off right away. At verse one: I waited patiently for the Lord, and He turned to me and heard my cry for help. A Men, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry for help. I mean, it's just a little bit uh, amazing that we serve a God that is the creator of heaven and earth, and yet he also listens to our cries for help. Little old tiny me, you know, go sit by the ocean someday and just look out at the vast expanse of it all and and realize you're only seeing the tiny little portion of it and yet it it puts it in perspective a little bit how small how small we are and then it just stirs up a uh, real thanksgiving that man lord you're so amazing you're so good to us that you actually turn to me and hear my cry for help um he brought me up from a desolate pit out of the muddy clay and set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure. <clears throat> and those are all like figurative languages for like going down to death, you know. And so he brought, pulled, it, pulled you up out of death, basically, and set, set your feet on a rock so that your steps would be secure. And that therefore should then produce a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to my God that many would see in fear and put their trust in the Lord. So that's kind of the, the dynamic that David's talking about. He's like, you pulled me up out of death. You set my feet on a rock and, and it made me want to sing. You put a new song in my heart to declare my thanksgiving and my just awe and amazement of who you are. And that many then come to see and fear and, and trust in the Lord as a result of that new song that comes out of us and, so I was just thinking about what, where's your song? Where's your song? Where's your, where's your appreciation for what God has done? Is it, is it alive and active? In that case, I say yes. Yes, keep on going. Keep on singing. Keep on speaking out on what God has done for you. And if maybe it's gone a little silent, maybe you've lost some perspective. Maybe you've been a little beat down lately. Maybe situation, circumstance, who knows what, right? It could be anything. But to go back and, uh, and, and wait patiently on the Lord, that, that waiting patiently for the Lord indicates that you're, you're waiting on his judgment call, his time frame, not your own, that you're deciding not to go out and try to fix it yourself. You're deciding to actually wait and see, God, what are you going to do here? that you're not going to go to some other source or some other avenue for your solution, but you're going to wait patiently and wait expectantly for the Lord to show up. So where is, where is your song? What is your song? Do you know your song? And if you don't, let's find it. Let's find your song and let's sing it with boldness because the result of it is that many would see and fear and trust in the Lord. Come on, that's, that's kind of where we want to go anyways. How happy is anyone who has put his or her trust in the Lord and has not turned to the proud or to those who run after lies? So happy are the people that put their trust in the Lord. Lord, my God, you have done many things, your wondrous works and your plans for us. None can compare with you. Man, this is such a good psalm today to just meditate on and to to write your perspective towards God to write your perspective towards your circumstances around you the things that you're facing in comparison to the amazing God that we serve if I were to report and speak of them they are more than can be told that's so that's such a great statement you do not delight in sacrifice and offering you and offering you open my ears to listen 
you do not ask for a whole burnt offering or a sin offering. So you don't, you don't delight in sacrifice and offering, but you open my ears to listen. And that opening my ears to listen implies obedience that I'm going to hear and then do what you say. Um, because in the Hebrew, the words kind of had the same meaning. There wasn't really this concept of hearing somebody and not doing what they said. Actually, they would basically, if you didn't obey the, the almost the assumption, you, you never actually heard. So when the Bible says that he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Lord is saying, it's implying obedience in that as well. Let, let the one that has an ear to hear, hear and obey what the word of the Lord is to you. So, Lord, open my ears to listen. Lord, open my ears to listen. That's a, that's a great cry of my heart today. Lord, open my ears to listen to you. And then I said, see, I have come uh, in this scroll. It is written about me. I delight to do your will, my God, and your instruction is deep within me. I mean, I just was thinking this morning, I want to ask myself the question, do I delight to do his will? And if I don't delight to do his will, why? What's getting in the way? What, what am I prioritizing? What am I loving more than what God has for me? Because if I love something more than what God has for me, then I'm being silly. Uh, I don't know. I, that's a nice way to put it. You know, like the God of the universe who created heaven and earth, who has all wisdom of power and authority, uh, has has designed a plan for you and designed a plan for me, how silly is it for me to desire anything other than what he has for me? Lord, let your instruction be deep within me and let it let it come out as it's needed, you know. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. See, I do not keep my mouth closed as you know, Lord. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly i do not keep my mouth closed i do i did not hide your righteousness in my heart i spoke about your faithfulness and salvation i did not conceal your constant love and truth from the great assembly these ones man i just all i can think of is <clears throat> am i proclaiming am i hiding am you know am i am i actively speaking Am I, am, I, am I declaring the goodness and the greatness of God to those around me? Or am I just keeping it to myself? Or, you know, or am I keeping my mouth closed? Am I not speaking? Am I, am I hiding it all in my heart? So I don't want to hide it. I want to proclaim it. I, I want to bring it out. I want to speak about it. I don't want to conceal it. I want to reveal it. You know? So <clears throat> I just thought it's, it's a great question for us to ask ourselves today and a great challenge coming from the Holy Spirit today. Proclaim, proclaim what all the great things that I've done for you. One, wait patiently before me. Two, take stock of what I'm doing in your life. And then three, proclaim it with all that you have while you listen and obey so I can continue to pour out my blessings upon you. Because we, we've seen time and time again, as we went through Proverbs back in October, and now going through the Psalms, that there is a blessing that comes on a life lived in righteousness and obedience. And so as we live that life of uh, righteousness and obedience, and the blessing of the Lord continues to flow to us, we continue to have more and more and more to proclaim. And it's pretty beautiful. So that's all I had for you for today. We'll finish off this chapter tomorrow. But God bless you. Have a great day and uh, I will see you tomorrow.